is in unknown. So what happens in this fight tonight? How does Little Joe attack one of the best and most exciting boxers in the world? Let's find out. Tonight, one of boxing's most exciting performers, Arturo Gatti, returns to his native Montreal, Canada. The former IBF junior lightweight champion is ready to make yet another world title run. Gatti was in the fight of the year back in 1998 against Ivan Robinson. 1,600 total punches were thrown. Robinson was down in the fourth, hurt in the tenth. But Ivan would win a split decision and pull off a major upset. After another loss to Robinson, Gatti went back to the grindstone. In February of this year at Madison Square Garden in a mismatch, he knocked out Joey Gamache in the second round. Gatti weighed 19 pounds more, and Gamache, the former champ, never had a chance. In April of this year, yet another tune-up. Gatti took on Eric Jakubowski. Jakubowski had a decent record, but Gatti was just too good. Gatti put him away in the second round. Arturo Gatti, like Mike Tyson and Oscar De La Hoya, has unbelievable marketability. Win, lose, or draw. And he likes that position. It feels great, you know, to be in that position, but I think I earned it in uh, the fights that I had. And, you know, one thing, you know, the whole world knows that when I come into the rink, I, I'm not going down for nothing. And I don't care how much I'm getting paid. I'm just fighting because I love the game and I'll fight for to the end. Tonight, Gaddy takes on Joe Hutchinson of Indianapolis. Sure, he hasn't lost a fight, but the quality of his competition and his professional career is not very good. In fact, we saw Hutchinson here on Friday Night Fights in October of 99. He dispatched of Steve Walker in the third round. Hutchinson's last five opponents have a winning percentage of only 22%. So how does a guy named Little Joe go about beating Thunder Arturo Gatti? My plan is to box. You know, stay behind my jab, keep my hands up at all times. You know, a lot of lateral movement, side to side. Never stand in front of him. That's not going to happen. You know, I'm going to stalk him until I got him in the cool I want him. Um, I mean, I just watched him box. I mean, he likes to mix it up a little bit. So I'm just going to take my time. I don't want to scare him right away, so I got to run around. Um, I'm going to make sure he bites to the hook like I, I can knock him out for him. But uh, he's a good fighter. He's got fast hands and he's undefeated. So I'm not going to forget that. Joe Hutchinson's in the ring. Arturo Gatti is on his way. We are getting set for tonight's main event here in Montreal. Now to size up the strategy, we take you inside Atlas's world. Arturo, your opponent tonight is a southpaw. Show the people where you're going to put your feet and which direction you're going to move to take advantage of him being the southpaw. I'm going to put my foot at the outside and step to the right, to my left all the time. To my left all the time. Yeah. In other words, you want to stay away from his backhand, his power hand. That's right. I'm going to lean in to the side and put my right hand to his chin and the left hook can come out. And also by side. getting that position, you got a better position for your jab, don't you? Yeah, definitely. You got a better he, angle there. Definitely. I'll tell you, there's two ways to counter punch. One is to use your legs, one is to move your head. I think Hutchinson's going to look to move that head. When he throws something out, he's going to look to slip and counter right back. What are you going to do to make sure you don't fall into that trap? Well, I'm going to lean to, to my, my left, and that's your right. Like that, you won't be able to counter punch my right hand if I'm leaning at this side. It'll go right over me. So you're going to move as you punch? That's right. So tonight in your fight with Arturo Gatti, you know, he's a guy who's a good banger. But I noticed that he takes a picture after he punches. What are you going to do after he finishes punching? He poses a little bit. What I have to do is I have to catch and counter and step outside and keep him from turning, keep him from putting his left leg outside of my right. In other words, he finishes, bam, 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 step, right around. You're not going to let him pose? Can't let him pose. Oh, well, we know that Gaddy's a good offensive fighter. We know he's a big puncher. But my question as a trainer, if I had you, is where is he going to go with those punches? Well, you're a smaller guy. You use those legs. He's going to go to the body. He likes to go to that body. How are you going to avoid him sitting in there and throwing those left hook right hands to the body? What I have to do is I have to dip and catch the shots and also counter off of them and also keep my step to keep him turning. Yeah, move your legs a little bit. Exactly. Don't let them be set to bang to that body. Exactly. That is Atlas's world, 22,000 strong here in Montreal to see Arturo Gatti fight for the first time in his hometown. And here comes Thunder Gatti. 
Former IBF junior lightweight champion, made three defenses. Former USBA junior lightweight champion. He arrived in Montreal. 2,200 people showed up for an open workout. Even Arturo was shocked by the interest and support that he has received on his return to Montreal, but arguably one of the most exciting men in all of boxing. Gaddy has four losses in his career. He's been knocked out once, that by Angel Man Freddy, back in 1998. Daddy insists that he can box, but Teddy, he says, I'll give one, I'll take one to give one or two. That's my style, and at age 28, I'm not changing. And at age 28, I'm glad you brought that up. Because you judge a fighter not by his chronological age, but by the amount of punches he's taken. And Arturo Gatti might be a little older than that when you get down to that kind of measuring. Because he's taken a lot of punches. Except in his last two fights, he got a bit of a reprieve. He fought less of guys, and he had an easier time. And he deserved it. Here's our ring announcer, Christian Gauthier. from the Molson Center here in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Here is tonight's main event. Ten rounds of action in the middleweight division. Mesdames, Messieurs, voici maintenant le combat principal de la soirée, prévu pour 10 rounds dans la catégorie des poids mi-moyens. Nous vous rappelons, Mesdames, Messieurs, que ce combat est présenté en collaboration avec main event. Ladies and gentlemen, this final bout is a co-presentation of main event. It's Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Gary Shaw, and its Programs Director, Mr. Dennis Dalton. Les juges pour ce combat, judging this bout at ringside, Monsieur André Bidegaré, Monsieur Richard de Carufel, et Monsieur Sylvain Leblanc. L'arbitre, when the bell rings, referee Mike Griffin will handle all the action. D'abord, dans le coin bleu de Indianapolis en Indiana, portant la culotte noire et pesant 141,6 lignes. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner from Indianapolis, Indiana, wearing black trunks and weighing in at 141,6 pounds. His professional record shows 18 wins, 8 for knockout, 2 draws in 20 bouts. Il a une fiche professionnelle de 18 victoires, 8 par KO et 2 combats nuls en 20 combats. Mesdames, Messieurs, Ladies and Gentlemen, Lou Joe Hutchinson! Et dans le coin rouge de Jersey City, New Jersey, portant la culotte blanche et bleue et pesant 146,7 lignes. Introducing, fighting out of the red corner from Jersey City, New Jersey. Wearing white trunks with blue trim and weighing in at 146.7 pounds. His professional record shows 32 wins, 27 by knockout in 36 bouts. He is undefeated. Il a une fiche professionnelle de 32 victoires, 27 par KO, en 36 combats. Il est invaincu. Mesdames, Messieurs, Le champion du monde, 1995 à 1997. L'aspirant numéro 4 du WBC et de la WBA. Ladies and gentlemen, he was world champion from 1995 to 1997 and currently holds the number four ranking for the WBC and the WBA. Introducing Arturo Vander. So Arturo Gatti, Joe Hutchinson being introduced. So much buildup for this fight. But Willette Hilton was so thrilling that the crowd right now, you get a sense they're almost trying to catch their breath. Let's take a look at the rules as governed by the province of Quebec. 
Three knockdown rule in effect. No standing eight count. You can be saved by the bell in the final round only. Accidental fouls. They'll go to the scorecards after four rounds are complete. Joe Hutchinson, 30 years of age, had six weeks of preparation. Has not fought since April the 11th. Fifth round stoppage of Alonzo Sojourney. Arturo Gatti last fought April the 29th in New York. Stopped Eric Jakubowski in two rounds. Gaddy's knockout percentage, 75%. 15 first-round knockouts. Hutchinson, not a big puncher. Against much lesser competition. And again, just like we mentioned in the Will Light Hilton fight, the beginning, very important. What's important here is that Hutchinson establishes a real specific fight plan. Does not stand in one spot too long. Uses his speed, his southpaw style, and his boxing ability. Stay away from the biggest, stronger Gaddy. Hutchinson, obviously fighting in front of the biggest crowd that he has ever performed in front of. Although he has performed in other areas in front of big crowds. He was a rapper and dancer. And at the Black Expo in Indiana, he won the StarQuest competition as a rapper and a dancer. So he said, I'm not intimidated by big crowds, and I was the underdog in that, too. And a nice kid we talked to him yesterday. Both of these guys. Very personable. Gaddy said that he'd come into the ring at about 160 pounds, went in barely at 147. Just so like we talked about with Led Hilton. A couple rounds under the belt of Hutchinson, that's what he needs. Well, Hutchinson hoping that he can extend Gaddy. He knows Gaddy will get cut. And he's just hoping that. He can catch lightning in a bottle. Even he realizes there's not much of a chance of winning a decision here in Montreal against Gaddy. Gaddy going in the right place to buy it. And then to the head. You can see Hutchinson, the smaller guy, the quicker guy, likes to use those legs a little bit. That's his style. Go to the body. And that's where Gaddy's going. Take those legs away. Gaddy looks a lot bigger than he did yesterday when we interviewed him. Doesn't he, Bob? Well, probably about 13 pounds bigger. As you mentioned, he's like a sponge. He dries out and then puts the fluids back in his body and he, his weight balloons right back up. He says people are crazy if they think I go and I just stuff myself with food. It's mostly liquid. And he says, when the time the fight is over, if it goes the distance, he said, I'll be back down to 147. And he's one guy for his career that hopes that those states do not change the rules of going back to weigh-ins the same day of the fight. That would be a disadvantage to Arturo Gatti. He has time to put that weight in those liquids, those valuable liquids and electrolytes, back into his body when the weigh-in is the night before. Well, he would not be able to fight at this weight. He, he would have to fight at a higher weight. Good left hand by Gatti. He's done some good body work here in round one against Joe Hutchinson. Here to sold out Molson Center in Montreal, Canada. Good round one for Gaddy. Mixed punches to the body and the head. Hutchinson got some things done as well. Gaddy had 24 power shots in that first round. Probably 27 that he connected with. 64. The good news if you're a supporter of Hutchinson or if you're just a supporter of watching a competitive fight is that a couple times Hutchinson has been caught a little bit. He's handled it well. And if he can handle the punch well, he has a chance in this fight. Well, he asked Hutchinson, I mean, about his lackluster opponents. Three fights ago, he fought a guy who was 0-5. Two fights ago, a guy who was 4-17. His last fight, a guy who was 2-13. He said, yeah, he said, I don't have a good record. Gaddy has all the experience here, but I'm going to prove by stepping up and taking Gaddy that I can fight with these guys. That remains to be seen. But he's not scared, that's for sure. And there's one element that you can never discount. When a guy has never lost, he has not learned how to lose. And he gives up that zero very, very begrudgingly. Right now, Gaddy, a little bit like Hilton, looking for one punch, maybe too much. Allowing the style of the smaller man to be effective. He 
Even though Hutchinson's doing well here, he shouldn't stand in front too long. But he keeps those hands moving, not a bad idea, right? No, especially with Gaddy when he goes defensive, Bob. You'll watch as the fight goes on. Warning for the heads there. It was a clash earlier. Referee trying to keep control. You'll watch as the fight goes on. Our cameras will pick it up. Sometimes Gaddy goes defensive too long. And if you stay with him and you let your hands go, you can get a lot of shots off for free. In other words, he doesn't mix offense with defense real well. He does one or the other. When he's on defense, you can punch like that. And you can stay with him. A little swelling on the left eye of Gaddy, but he starts to swell after the opening bell. Got hit with a right hand, and he didn't like it. Oh, Gaddy's cut. Might have left from eye. the head. Left eye is cut. Hutchinson landed some decent. That's a bad cut on the left eyebrow. Now remember, you got to get through four rounds. Now, if it's an accidental clash of heads. It's going to be a technical draw. That is a brutal cut. Gaddy's saying it's a headbutt. It's up to the referee, Michael Griffin. If it's not a headbutt, if it was from a punch, then Hutchinson would win on a TKO if they stopped this thing. I think he's saying it was a headbutt, a clash of heads. And that is huge. Joe Susan, one of the best cut men in the game, is working on that cut right now. That's the kind of cut it's going to be very hard for a doctor to let him go out. This is above the eye. It's early in the fight. It can get worse. The referee, very deep. The referee or doctor can make the call here. Doctor says let it go on. Doctor's going to let it continue. I wonder how much of that decision is based on how big this fight has been built up and how many people are in this arena. Maybe they're letting it go a little longer than they would let it go. That kind of cut if it wasn't such a big event. Now there's the end of round two with a subplot. And now Gaddy and Hutchinson having a few words. They'll work on the cut of Gaddy. We'll be back after this. We start round three. Arturo Gaddy, Joe Hutchinson underway. We were formed, informed discreetly, I might add, by the referee Michael Griffin that that cut on the left eyebrow of Gaddy was from a punch, Teddy. He did not walk around the ring and make it very obvious to many people that that was from a punch and not a clash of heads. And you have to wonder with the severity of that cut, the only reason why they're letting it go is because they know that it was from a punch and not from a clash of heads. And of course, if they stopped it from a punch, Gaddy loses. And nobody here wants Gaddy to lose. And he just put 20,000 people with the help of Willette and Hilton into this arena. I can guarantee if that was a clash of heads, we'd have a technical draw right now. Because it is a bad cut. And we were saying it right away. But most of the time, 9 out of 10, Maybe outside of this situation, 10 out of 10, a cut of that severity be a no-brainer. That, that cut reminds me of the cut Holyfield had, I think, against Ray Mercer. And Gaddy's saying that he got flash ahead. Now we're going to get a timeout. Being influenced a little bit here by by Gaddy. Gaddy's upset. All the referees bringing the doctor in wants to take another look at it. Again, this, the referee has decided, has made it clear it was from a punch. If this fight is stopped, he loses. Lou Duva on the edge of the ring ropes. He's upset. That one was a clash of heads. Now Gaddy's going to just open up. Looks like Gaddy might be cut on the right eye, too. And he's butting. Now he's butting. He's butting back. He's here where he was born. His first fight ever here. 20,000 people. And now all of a sudden, he's in a situation of being in a tougher fight or a tougher situation than he thought he would be in. He's getting a little bit anxious, obviously. Now, why would a guy with two eyebrows cut even try to intentionally butt. 
even things up. Yeah, but you could just worsen your own cut. You know what the other thing, Teddy, is? He's in with a guy who's not scared. You can say what you want about Hutchinson's opponents and everything else. He's not intimidated. He's not as good as Gaddy, but he's not scared. Only thing, Hutchinson standing in front let those body shots go a little bit too long. Now he's going to be warm for low blows, and I'll tell you why. We got a little over-officiating going on right here. I think the referee's trying too hard to show. Maybe because they let this fight go on, as we said, where a lot of places wouldn't allow a fight with that cut go on. The referee's trying to show that they're not biased by warning the hometown kid for low blows. Combination from Hutchinson. End of round three. You can see both heads are in there real close. And Gaddy once again complaining to the referee and the referee responding to Hutchinson to keep that head up. That was an accidental clash of heads. So now let me ask you another question. The cut on the right eye of Gaddy is from a clash of heads. The cut on the left eye is from a punch. Could they choose the cut to stop the fight? That's a pretty complicated question there. <laughs> column A, column B. It definitely would create quite a firestorm of controversy. You could be that selective on what cut you stop the fight with. Of course, the man in charge of taking care of the cut, real good cut man, Joe Souza, in the corner of Gaddy. Hutchinson standing in front a little too much. But he's handling and he's blocking yeah, him. He is. He should use those legs go around Gaddy, not allow Gaddy to get set to punch. Hutchinson bounced the right hand in there. Hutchinson's going to have a chance to punch inside some of these wide shots. Gaddy they all that, wide. Right. Good right hook by Gaddy. Gaddy's coming in there with his head a little bit. A little frustrated, I believe, Gaddy is. This whole coming, I think everybody around him told him it was going to be easy. All of a sudden, there's some problems. I think he's a little bit frustrated. All right, Russell Peltz, our boxing coordinator, and the guy who works with the commissions has informed me if they stop the fight because of the cut on the right eye that was really the butt in the last round, they would go to the cards after we get through this fourth round. If they stop the fight because of the left eye that was ruled a punch, Hutchinson's going to win by TKO. So you can pick the cut. Well, guess where my money is if they have to pick a cut? <laughs> I'll say the right eye. Now, Hutchinson hit with a low blow. He's going to get time. That left eye of Gaddy is brutal. That left eye of Gaddy, I guarantee you that if that was... The referee would have ruled out an accidental clash of heads that, that left eye. They would have stopped this fight. Only because he sort of quietly said it was a punch, but they allowed this thing to go. That's a brutal cut. Look for Hutchinson to have chances to punch in between here. Low blow again. Going to lose a point. It's about the third time he's been won. What's that saying? Best laid plans? Pretty low. As low as he's gonna get. Would have been more controversy if that punch that came from Gaddy, as the referee was stepping in there, landed clean and hurt Hutchinson. Now Hutchinson's fighting the way Gaddy would want him to fight. He's standing right in front of him. He mentioned about the weight sizing this fight up. The advantage is early. If the man stands in front of you, you're stronger. The disadvantage to put all that weight on is that you can tire. Bringing your weight down, drying out the weight Gaddy had to dry out to make that weight bump. If it becomes a competitive, contested fight, the advantage becomes a disadvantage. Gaddy can start to tire. A lot of subplots. Gaddy's eyes are both cut. He's lost the point for a low blow here in round four. Mess. Left eye round two from a punch. The referee, though, when he realized that he called it from a punch, if they would have stopped it, Hutchinson would have won on TKO. He sort of very quietly let it be known it was from a punch. 
The cut on Gaddy's right eye came from a clash of heads around later. I tell you, I mean, that cut is just incredible. We're not going out on the limb to say that in most places this fight would have been stopped. With the severity and the ugliness of that cut. Well, we talked about Arturo yesterday, and you heard about it in the main event setup piece. He's one of the few guys in boxing, Tyson, De La Hoya, who's marketable when he uses draw. He's very wide with all punches here. There's going to be opportunities if Hutchinson can hang in there to punch inside, do more than just make Gaddy miss. Start doing what he's doing there. Score. Well, in the last round, even if you gave it to Gaddy, you take the point away from the low draw. Punches are coming, but they're coming wide. Again, Hutchinson's concentrating on blocking and making a miss. He's going to have chances to start concentrating on offense, too. And of course, he's going to have to do this like that to win this fight. Why don't you try to just get after that cut any way you can? I mean, Hutchinson's a lefty. Pop that jab out. Just aim for that cut. Well, Arturo Gatti has had a Rocky-like career in the respect that he's always been in these Wars, cut, bloody, down. There's a couple things that Gaddy has against him. The punches he's taken in those tough fights and the weight that he's taken off to come down from such a high weight, 180 pounds, 175 pounds from all the reports, to come down to now 147 pounds. That can really hurt you for the future and for now. And it can lead to you getting cut easier. The skin stretches, and then it comes back. And it makes it much easier to cut that skin. Well, Hutchinson wanted to get this thing into the later rounds. Felt he could bust Gaddy up. He's done that. Now can he finish it? Nice combination from Hutchinson. Gaddy misses with that combination. Gaddy surprised. But this In guy, his mind, that the guy's still there. Yeah. Maybe a little underestimation of Joe Hutchinson with the nondescript competition. Now six underway, Arturo Gatti. Joe Hutchinson from Montreal. Sold out Molson Center. Friday Night Fights on ESPN2 presented by Miller Highlight. That's right, Joe Hutchinson is still here in round six. Gatti was cut badly, left eye. Left eyelid in round two is ruled a punch. After a lot of discussion, they let the fight go on. They would have stopped it. Gaddy would have been a loser. Cut in round three on the right eye. They say from the clash of heads. And that's important. Because if they stop the fight because of the right eye cut, they go to the cards. If they stop the cut fight because of the left eye cut, Hutchinson wins on TKO. Teddy's scorecard through five. 48-47, Gaddy. You have the last round even. I have it tied at 47. Remember, Gaddy lost the point in round four for a low bluff. Down goes Hutchinson from the counter. One thing he's not hurt, he's very clear. Actually, he was arguing with the ref that he slipped. We will be able to see later with the replay. But he definitely went down, there was a punch throw. I think he got hit and he was off balance more than anything else, but it was a force of a punch, and he went down, and correctly, that should be scored, scored a knockdown. What Gaddy can do now is Hutchinson so aware of those body shots. He's covered up so well. Gaddy can sometimes fake to the body, try to sneak something up to the head, and to get the arm to drop a little bit. Just one of the appeals of Gaddy is he's such, he's so old school. <laughs> the cuts and everything else. Shoots a right hand in there. Hutchinson doing a good job of blocking, but I think he should use those legs a little bit more. Go around Gaddy, not allow Gaddy to get off. Gaddy needs to be set to punch. See Gaddy wiping the blood away from that left eye. That's the really bad cut. And Hutchinson, Bob, at some point, and that point is coming real fast. Has to make a choice of doing more than just making Gaddy miss. Got to start moving those hands in between those wide punches. 
And that was a wide punch right there. Now Hutchinson made it miss. He's got to start making a choice to punch inside and make Gaddy pay if he wants to have a chance to win this fight. You know, I'm just thinking back about that cut on the left eye of Gaddy when they brought the doctor over to take a look at it in the second round. Gaddy's people actually started treating the cut. Remember they threw some adrenaline or Vaseline in there? Of course, that's not supposed to happen. The referee should be in charge of that. The referee wants the doctor up to look at the cut of Gaddy again. Uh, which cut, though? Can't be looking at the one on the right eye because that one seems to be in order. It's the left eye that's the bad one. Joe Sousa has basically stopped the bleeding from the right eye cut. And, of course, the left eye is the eye that if they did stop it because of that, the fight would then, of course, go to Hutchinson. Yeah. Because remember, that was from a punch. So they're going to do everything to make sure that that left eye is okay. Intriguing bout Montreal. From that angle, from that angle, that punch didn't land. And that's why Hutchinson, as we said, just as it happened, was really challenging it to the referee. Well, we need to see another angle. Because, Absolutely. Because you know what? From that angle, obviously it didn't land to the head. But even if you land a shot to the chest and the guy goes down, it's a knockdown. Yes, you're right. So from that angle, with out of respect for referee Michael Griffin, it's hard to tell. Looked like Hutchinson blocked it, but maybe it snuck through on the chest. There's those wide punches to Gaddy. Good job again by Hutchinson blocking, but he has the punch in between. Otherwise, he'd just be a good loser. Well, Hutchinson has never lost. 18 wins, two draws. He was the smaller guy before the weigh-in. And even a smaller guy when they stepped in the ring. Hutchinson weighed in at just shy of 142 pounds. Gaddy just made the 147. Half of the fights that Hutchinson has had has been a junior welterweight, 11 of the 20 fights at 143 pounds or less. Look, Gaddy won for a low blow. Remember, he had a point deducted in round four. Funny, everyone talks about the size and the advantage of Gaddy being big. He won his title at junior lightweight for the most his career then, and at lightweight. Now he's up. That's well too late. And dries out, even at that weight, tremendously to make the weight, which can hurt him in tough, long fights. This fight is going longer now, but it's not tough, other than the cut, because Hutchinson has not been punching enough, although he did in that spot. Too few and far between from Hutchinson. There he rips off the combination. And when Gaddy goes defensive, you have a chance to really get your hands off, Bob, because he doesn't mix offense with defense too often. He does one or the other, and it gives you a chance to adjust the defense. Can Hutchinson steal this round, Teddy? He's having a pretty good last 40 seconds. I don't think he has to steal it. I think he's winning it right now. Backs away from some Gaddy power. Gaddy... Willing to take, to give. Most of those punches missing, despite the crowd's roar. Stayed underway, Arturo Gatti and Joe Hutchinson. Hutchinson knocked down in round number six, although it was tough to see if it was really a scoring blow. It was not to the head. Maybe it was to the chest. We didn't have a very good angle on it. Gatti. Cut left eye round two from a punch, although our replays show a headbutt. And then cut in round three on the right eye from the clash of heads. Right now, Hutchinson has done what he wanted to do. He's in his fight, late in the fight, and he's confident right now. But is he confident to go the distance, or is it a confidence to try to win? That is what counts. Well, Teddy, you mentioned it earlier. Guys don't like to give that O up. Hutchinson does not have a loss on his resume. 
You can go after Gatti. Even though you have to be careful not standing in front, you can go after him when he goes on defense, Bob. He gives you those window of opportunities because he doesn't do offense and defense together. When he goes defensive, you can keep those hands moving. You can follow your man. Gatti will let you go on a run. And then before he comes back, you have time to know he's making the adjustment to offense. Hedges coming in there with Hutchinson that time. Now they're taking a point away from Hutchinson for a headbutt. Pretty quick. Right. And that cut left eye of Gaddy. That happened in round two. That point really hurts Hutchinson because he was having a good round here. As it's going now, wind up being an even round because he's winning this round Hutchinson but he could have won the round Gaddy not doing much of anything here in round eight hey! this is not what Gaddy expected when he came home to Montreal with 20,000 people to fight Joe Hutchinson Hutchinson smothering most of those punches and blocking them. He needs to punch inside. Not just survive. Not just play good defense. A good loser. Remember yeah, the story here in round eight. A pretty good round for Joe Hutchinson. But a point deducted for a low blow. So even if you gave him a round, it's even. Hutchinson threw 14 more punches and landed two more than Gaddy. But Hutchinson probably did not win the round because Jury didn't win the round. The question is whether he lost the round. One thing I do Point know deducted for a low blow. That's very sharp and astute on the, on the side of Hutchinson. And every time at the beginning of the round, Hutchinson comes out immediately and scores something to the head of Gaddy, knocking the coagulant right off the cut of Gaddy, where the cut can start bleeding again. In other words, Hutchinson does not allow the medicine that's put into those cuts in the corner, in between rounds, to stay in there for 30, 40, 50 seconds to start working. He knocks them right out. But he's got to continue doing that to win the round. In other words, he wants to do more than just make Gaddy bleed. He's got to be consistent with moving those hands. Teddy scorecard through eight rounds, 76-74 Gaddy. Now it's 75-74 Gaddy. Each man has had a point deducted for a low blow. Hutchinson was down in the sixth, albeit not from a shot that landed to the head. Punch that maybe landed to the chest and he went down. It was ruled a knockdown. Good shot there by Gaddy. Hutchinson was throwing an uppercut from a little too far away. That left hook was able to get in. Hutchinson steps back in with a combination. Uppercuts are good punches with Gaddy if you don't throw them from too far away. Throwing from too far away, that left hook of Gaddy has a gap to get in there. Gaddy's left eye a mess from round two. And again. It was ruled from a punch, although our replays may show otherwise. And we firmly believe, at least I believe, and Teddy believes, that the only reason they let this fight go on was because the referee ruled it from a punch. Hutchinson should be stepping it up here. Not just hanging in there. Not just surviving. Step it up. Because he's seen the worst of it already. He's got a man who really killed himself to make weight. But guys, if anything, there's going to be less left than Gaddy late in the fight. So take advantage of that. Hutchinson hasn't done a lot in this round. And he's allowed himself to get tied up. Tenth and final round still to come. Hutchinson still standing in front of Gaddy. On the cuts of Arturo Gatti here in round two, late stages of round two. Watch the heads come together. 
And you see Gaddy grabbing that left eye. It was ruled, though, a punch that caused the cut by referee Michael Griffin. They went to the corner for the doctor to look at it, and the doctor allowed Lou Duva to work on the cut, which, Teddy, as far as I know, you're not allowed to do that, to have the guy work on the cut when the doctor's looking at it. No, you're not. Most places, you're definitely not. Can't blame Lou Duva. He felt that he could get away with it. He's doing anything he can as a great corner man to help his fighter. He can get away with it. He figures, hey, why not? Was Lou Duva and Duva Boxing had the show next week. Lou was telling us September 15th at JFK High School in Patterson. Back to the roots. Duva Boxing. Daddy real wide again there, Bob. But not paying a price. We wonder if Hutchinson is content right now to do what most people didn't think he would do. And that's not win. Let's go to 10 rounds. Now, now you see how they're tying up and tight. Now normally you say, hey, that's the right strategy from Mr. Hudson, the smaller guy. Gotta tie him up. Right now he needs to punch inside. He's got a guy that's wide with his punches, the guy who's winning the fight probably on our scorecards anyway, Hutchinson needs to do more than just be strategically sound. He needs to punch inside and try to win. Daddy kind of just flailing away, trying for the big finish. And holding the ropes, referee Michael Griffin's shirt. Blood stain, looks like a butcher. All of it, Gaddy's blood. And again, Hutchinson allowing the tie-up. Well, win or lose, Hutchinson will, I think, probably wind up with another big fight after this. For stepping up in opposition and making a good account of himself. Well, he's opening up a bit here. Last 40 seconds, why not? He, by his own admission, he said he wasn't going to win a decision here in Montreal against Gaddy. You know, he had Gaddy in trouble there. A little bit. Losing all that weight, Bob. Don't underestimate how damaging that can be. That could be as damaging as punches. Gaddy just holding on. It can be saved by the bell in the final round. Hutchinson. Even though he's going to help his career here tonight by going the distance with Gaddy, he's going to feel, I think after this, that he could have done more and maybe even won the fight. Maybe kick himself a little. Well, a questionable low blow against Hutchinson and a questionable knockdown could be huge factors. Gaddy's left eye a mess. Fans here in Montreal enjoyed it. We'll be back with the judges' cards when we return after this timeout. Here are the total punch numbers. Gaddy landed 175 power shots. Teddy Atlas's scorecard is as follows. 95-93 for Gaddy. I had a 94-93 Gaddy. For the judges' cards, here's our ring announcer, Christian Gauthier. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, a good round of applause for these two warriors. One man at Richie's Mommy and Mr. Jose de Gaudier. Once you met the decision of the judges, here is the judges' decision. Le juge Billy Garry remet carte de pointage de 98, 93. Judge Billy Garry scores this bout 98 et 93. Le juge de Carifel, 99, 92. Judge de Carifel scores at 99 to 92. Et le juge Leblanc, 192. Judge Leblanc scores at 100 to 92. For the winner, by unanimous decision, le gagnant par décision unanime, Arturo Fernandez. Well, no surprise, Gaddy won a decision, surprised by the scores. And remember, that cut on the left eye, they let it go when it was ruled it was from a punch and not a clash of heads. Hopefully, Teddy will be back in Montreal for Willette Hilton 4 and Gaddy Hutchinson 2.